Hello, I'm Richard with ev 4 u Custom Conversions. And in today's video, we're going to do kind of a final walk around overview of this cargo trailer conversion, where we took a eight foot by 16 foot cargo trailer and converted it to a self-contained all electric travel trailer, recreational vehicle. So we'll get started. We'll do the exterior first and then we'll move to the interior. Well, we're gonna start on the back side of the trailer here. Uh, the lights on here are clear, so they don't really show up uh, until they're on, but the LED lighting, but the two that you see up top here, there and there, I added those. Those are brake lights and turn signals only. And so, you know, the trailer's got the tail, brake and turn signals that it came with, I added those extra ones up there because in my experience, it really makes the, the thing stand out more in traffic. Um, so people further back can see that you're, you're stopping or turning or whatever. So anyway, simple addition, but I think it adds to the overall layer of safety. So those were added. There's a, um, cameras all the way around. You can see one up there. And uh, well, the front corner, you'll see one. Anyway, there's four cameras uh, so that you can see what's going on inside the trailer and also while you're going down the roads recording what's going on around you. Um, in the back here, there's two doors, um, what's the word I want to use, anyway, two openings that are locked, but those are the intake and exhaust for the EcoFlow Wave 2 air conditioning and uh, heat. We added two windows on each side of the trailer, and um, we'll walk around here and take a look at the front. Oh, there's a 30 amp electrical service uh, that was also added. It's a very shallow V. I really can't get back far enough. I'm against the wall and the door here. But it's a shallow V. It's only about a foot and a half. Okay. Not, not that much of a V. And then on this side, we have the fresh water fill. So that's pretty much it. Uh, underneath the trailer, we have 46 gallons of gray water capacity storage. And, um, and with that, there's a pump, so I can pump that, those tanks. I don't have to, you know, gravity flow because uh, this trailer's kind of low, that kind of thing, but also it means I can send it further. Um, and we have a dry flush toilet, which I'll show you when we get in the inside. And so the, um, the um, uh, you know, it's just gray water. And so we can pump it a distance through a regular garden style hose. Um, and there's also a 12 volt uh, power outlet out there so I can some other 12 volt device up um, and there's also lights underneath the trailer that uh, point down for uh, as a rodent deterrent that will uh, hopefully keep the critters away from the trailer at night um, and they don't shine out so it won't bother anybody if you were my goal is not to be around other people but if you were it wouldn't be offensive to them, uh, but again, it keeps there from being shadows and, and spaces where rodents might want to get and chew on your tank or a hose or whatever, okay? And I did a video on how I did those tanks and the way they were mounted and, and, and um, uh, you know, the gravel shield and all that kind of stuff in, in a much earlier uh, video. 
again in one of the very early videos I showed uh, that I made this step it's a it's a larger platform uh, just to be a little more stable and user friendly my wife and I are only getting older and uh, so but it's lightweight it's made out of that uh, 8020 stuff and some ABS and so it's light and I use it for storage for things like the uh, the chalk you know the wheel locks and uh, and a few things like that when it's in the bed of the truck I just lift it out and stick it here and, and it's a step but the top lifts up and there's there's storage in there also um, of course first thing you see we've got a fire extinguisher and uh, grab bar and uh, electrical switches here so we've got uh, the, the main light, uh, ceiling light, the lights over the bed, and this is the fan. The fan is a reversible fan and uh, uh, multi-speed. We also have lights underneath the uh, counter, and they're dimmable, and they also go red. And so lights are controlled here that and that's our water pump right there sync with you know the normal gadgetry because we have a gray tank I've got a strainer here so nothing goes into the gray tank we don't want any food particles or anything going down there we have a dispenser for our drinking water we drink we're from uh, you know, Northern California, we have great bottled water up here. It comes right off uh, Mount Shasta. And so that's what we drink. So we have a 50 gallon uh, freshwater tank on board. And then we have a five gallon of drinking water. And we carry extras in the cab of the truck in the back seat. So that's separate drinking water. The 50 gallons isn't consumed for drinking, it's only for cooking cleaning and bathing. So we have a six foot counter. You come in and um, and then storage above. Those are 30 inch tall cabinets. And um, underneath here there's the 50 gallon water tank. other stuff stored underneath there of course but there's plenty of storage down below here also there's three drawers there's these two and then there's one in here this is a drawer also so we've got that for storage in the kitchen area on the other side here we have and this is not a real wide angle on this I guess I could use my phone, but I'm just always used to using this Sony camera. But anyway, on the other side, we have um, kind of the cook area. Let me turn off my camera monitor here so it's not a distraction. And so we have a small microwave oven. You have a pantry above that. Again, 30 inch tall. Um, and then below the microwave oven we have an inductive induction cooktop dual element setup which you can actually use in the drawer or you can remove it from the drawer and move it over here to the counter or you can take it outside and below that is the electrical cabinet with all the electronics batteries and all sorts of good stuff in there. Um, did I start to mention the wardrobe? So this is a wardrobe. So you got your hanging clothes can go in there. And uh, folding clothes can go in here. Um, and we have seating in the back. And these are cushions that are meant for like a front porch swing. So they're supposed to be really puffed up and everything. But they come 
in a little tiny box and they're vacuum packaged. So they're just, you know, sucked down to nothing. And you're supposed to set them out in, in the sunshine and they'll puff up. Well, we just haven't had much sunshine lately. It's been raining and, and cold. And so they haven't had a chance to go out and really puff up. So um, that's to come. Um, right now we've got Velcro around the windows that I don't like and uh, I'm gonna have to come up with something else but that's for the window covers we got window covers that go over that that are um, have the reflected stuff on the one side and then they're black on the opposite side so the inner side here um, and then you have storage below the seating we have two storage cavities in the back here on either side this side is a, a, a Bouge RV uh, 53 quart uh, refrigerator freezer setup we're using this one on the door side as a freezer only and the one on the opposite side as a refrigerator only and so like I said, between those two, there's storage. In the middle here, we have the EcoFlow Wave 2. And it's ducted out. It goes out those um, vent doors that I showed you on the outside. Um, we have a folding chair that we use in conjunction with the table. Because there's so much width here, if you're sitting, and one person's sitting on the bench, you know, you can't go from bench to bench um, unless you had just a huge table, which would take up, you know, a lot of space. So in order to maintain as much floor space as, as possible, we have, I don't know if it's a four or five foot long table. And it's a folding table with adjustable height legs. So you can have it coffee table height. You can have it desk height, counter height. And so very versatile. Of course, you can take it outside. You can use it in here. And I'll show you some photos. You can have it fits across this way, or you can have it uh, lengthwise, linearly also. Um, we have a queen-size bed up above. And we did a video on showing how we designed and built the bed lift system. And uh, that's all done through... Uh, uh, you know these channels with the truck I have pin for safety when it's up and uh, it's just a cable system that goes to what I call a cable truck and all that's behind here goes down to a winch which is behind the EcoFlow Wave 2 and uh, Press of a button, the bed goes up and down in literally just a few seconds. <laughs> and so, um, and again, more storage on the other side here. So, um, our plan is to travel with the bed in the down position. When I've had this out before, uh, when I went, took it to the DMV and, and took it, had the trailer weighed, the... Um, I just left it in the up position. It doesn't matter. Travel's fine. But the uh, the idea is, is we'll travel with it in the down position normally. That keeps our center of gravity lower. That kind of thing. Uh, and the table and chair will actually just sit down on a... I've got moving quilt kind of thing and it'll just be sitting on the floor uh, in that. And like I said, I'll show you some photos of things set up. Um, so that's the main part of the trailer um, and then we have the bathroom here it's a regular you know door uh, it's 28 inches I believe uh, and then we have storage look out for that guy um, upper and lower storage and a mirror and we have another mirror and medicine cabinet on uh, I'll walk in here. On uh, on this side right here, and then we have our Laveo dry flush toilet, 
and uh, and you can see we have storage above it and over here we have a 32 inch by 32 inch shower um, with the Nautilus door you've got your light switch and your fan um, again like I said here the large fans with um, with the cover so you can have the fan or the you know the vent open anytime rain or shine I usually drive down the road with the vents open so it doesn't get too hot in the trailer uh, they're multi-speed reversible fans and again like I said switch it right there we have some hooks and storage between the shower and the wall because of this shallow V um, I didn't mention uh, the outlets and stuff but we have you know power here we've got outlet inside here inside here is also the uh, the hot water heater four gallon hot water heater we have uh, an outlet inside the uh, these are outlets I'm talking you know 100, 120 volt AC uh, inside the utility or the electrical cabinet we've got one there also on both sides of counters plus we have four USB charging points there um, and there's uh, plugs in, in next to the wall on both sides um, by the uh, freezer and refrigerator and then there's one at each one of the benches <laughs> so I got plenty of outlets and uh, lots of different circuits so again all the electrical AC and DC you know the, the fuse panel and the circuit breaker panel all that is all inside my electrical cabinet so that's the the 50 cent tour um, like I said, on the roof, we got 800 watts of solar. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. I think that's everything. Anyway, this was a, uh, oh, what, four-month journey from the time I purchased the trailer in uh, Roseburg, Oregon and uh, brought it down here and ordered my stuff and figured out how I was going to do this and then actually having time to do it. <laughs> so now we're waiting on the weather and then we're going to do a, a, a three or four day shakedown cruise to make sure everything functions and holds together. Um, I've never done a trailer from scratch like this before, so this is my, my first time out. And all these cabinets are residential. So this is this is particle board. So they're heavy. That was the other thing I was going to share with you. Um, and so, you know, I don't know how this is all going to hold together. I mean, I, uh, I tried to, you know, I've got... Uh, you know plywood backing and these are bolted to the wall of the trailer and uh, and hopefully um, you know I've spreading the weight and everything and and the glue and staples that they make these things out of hold up <laughs> but I don't know I really don't know the other thing was uh, if you watch the earlier video um, the um, the trailer, the quality of trailers today is, is less than desirable. I could have rebuilt the whole trailer. And uh, if I had the time and inclination, you know, I probably should have. Um, I have a vent down there. So again, if you're in the bathroom, taking a shower, you get the fan on. It allows air to come from the rest of the trailer and help uh, clear and keep any... Uh, you know steam and moisture from building up in the bathroom uh, usually most RVs you'll see they have the the bottom of the door it sits way high it's way up so that they can suck air underneath the bottom 
or they leave a gap at the top or both. And I just don't care for that, so I put a vent on the side there. Um, I've owned a lot of travel trailers uh, starting since 1979 when we got the first one, so I'm, I'm not a novice to the the whole experience, but I am a novice in you know designing and building my own. So we wanted something that was not too claustrophobic filling, one that was functional. So we have you know full queen size bed, just like we have at home. We have um, you know, uh, a 32 by 32 inch shower, it's, you know, it's a comfortable size. You're not, you're not feeling like you're, you know, somewhere and, and, uh, and roughing it at all. Um, my research and everything, I'm, I'm hoping the dry flush toilet works as, as nice as, um, I hope it does, but, um, you know, we don't have a black tank in that case. Uh, so that's less water uh, that we have to store on board and which is a weight issue again and so let's let's talk about weight this trailer has a gross uh, weight rating of 7,000 pounds and um, empty it was basically 2,800 pounds and I uh, <laughs> I added, uh, by time everything's said and done, enough weight to bring this trailer's weight up to basically almost 6,000 pounds with a 650 pound tongue weight. So we're, by the time we put all of our personal belongings and everything in here, we're probably going to be, you know, 6,500 pounds. <laughs> so heavier than I really wanted to be, but you know, uh, I, I, you know, I wasn't really building to, to keep the weight down so much as I was building it in a way that um, it fit our particular wants and desires. And so um, I guess in that case, I did, I came in underweight, you know, we're not up at the limit. We're closer than I really wanted to be. I wanted the trailer to be between five and 6,000 pounds, but obviously that's not the way it turned out. A um, few other facts about the trailer, um, just in a, that overview thing is, is there's uh, the walls and ceilings have one inch of the hardboard uh, foam um, insulation. The pink stuff. <laughs> um, and then we have inch and a half in the ceiling. Um, what else? So you got a double floor, so I got three quarter inch plywood floor that came on the trailer. I put an inch of insulation down and put three quarter inch plywood on top of that. And then it has um, uh, a waterproof uh, laminate flooring on top of that. And uh, so, you know, all these things just add weight. The original trailer had uh, three eighths inch three-eighths inch plywood walls and because I was bolting stuff to the walls uh, I went to half inch give you a little more meat to bite into um, and I used you know inserts and stuff so I'm bolting so like the the bed rails those were actually you know put into place, found where my mountings were going to be, and removed the wall, put a, a, a net stop or whatever they're called on the back side of the plywood and reinstalled the walls. And so those channels are bolted to the wall. So um, the cabinets aren't, the cabinets are just an insert where you drill a hole and you put a, a threaded insert that gets threaded into the wood and then the bolt threads into that. And we'll see how all that holds up. I really don't know. I don't have a, you know, 
any experience in doing all this and I'm not a carpenter. Um, I'm just, you know, there are things I know about like the solar and batteries and so forth. And there's things that I'm faking it. You know, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just uh, uh, guessing and hoping that it all works as desired. And I'll let you know because we're going to do, a, you know, uh, about 300 mile, three, 400 mile shakedown uh, cruise, uh, like I said, three, two or three nights and see how it goes. And then uh, after that, we'll probably do oh, probably 25 to 3,000 mile trip that we have planned to the, the southwest of the U.S. here. So we'll see. We'll know. And uh, hopefully, you know, we don't get to our destination and find a pile of rubble inside the trailer <laughs> and water leaking everywhere and all that kind of stuff, you know. You know. So hopefully uh, everything holds together and works as desired. And, uh, and I have some good reports and, and some uh, positive things to share with others that, you know, that you can do it too and um, or come back and say you don't want to do it this way <laughs> and so we'll we'll see i really don't want to be rebuilding this trailer and so one of the big issues that's always concerned me and i've already thought about if i have to, to tear the thing apart and redo it is i'll be doing quite a bit of welding but the the metal that they used and everything was very thin and probably 50 percent of the screws didn't take and i so i had to do a lot of patching where you you put a screw in and and hope that the metal you know didn't didn't spread because the metal that they used is so thin and so uh and i used you know some uh finer threaded screws to to get a, a bite and not um not strip, but yet hold and not back out. So we'll see. We'll see. I just don't know. Um, the, 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 the overall trailer quality, I, I have not been impressed. And you don't know till you really tear the thing apart and look at it. And once I did that, I was like, oh gosh. So I've had some concerns and reservations since day one. I also have, uh, which you've seen in other videos and at the racetrack and so forth we have a um, hallmark trailer that we haul vehicles in and uh, the the hallmark trailer is the same it's a um, it's an 18 footer no you know flat front versus the 16 foot cargo trailer but they're both a 7,000 pound uh, gross uh, trailer weight but if you look at the um, the hallmark and it's a 2004 versus a 2023 but the hallmark is built like a mercedes compared to this thing being a yugo you know what i mean just so it was just what was available what was the price range blah 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 and uh we're hoping for the best and we'll let you know good or bad I'll, I'll let you know how things work out so hope you uh, subscribe so you get notified when we do these we're going to have some more car videos coming up from uh, conversions and so forth so um, hopefully we have something that you uh, get a benefit from so until next time Hope you enjoy the ride and have a great day.